Lemon pepper seasoning. Might as well be gold dust for black people. As much as I love lemon pepper seasoning, I've actually never made it from scratch. So today we're gonna to kind of experiment together. And that's pretty much it, that's the tweet. We're gonna put our lemon pepper seasoning onto a pork loin. We're gonna smoke it for about two hours. Then we're gonna cut it up and turn it into some delicious sandwiches with some bacon, some provolone, some pesto. I can't wait. This is actually a sandwich I've made many, many times and I've been looking for an excuse to make it again. And that's why I created this show, just to eat all the bad shit and be like, Wow, I ate it because um, I, I had to film it. Starting with our lemon pepper seasoning, Seasoning. Normally I kind of skip this step because I think it's well known, but this is the most important time to wash the outside of your lemons because people have been touching them and then you picked them up at the grocery store and we are using the zest of these lemons so we want to make sure it's clean and free of anything bad. So I've got about eight lemons here. I've got me a sheet of parchment paper on a baking sheet and I'm just going to take my microplane and all I want is just the zest. Don't go beyond that white that's there because that's just gonna be bitter, nasty stuff. I'm just gonna keep going around and I'm gonna do this to every single lemon. It's gonna take a while, but once you, you've got them all, again, just dump them on. So bear with me for a second, unless you like microplaning lemon ASMR, uh, microplaning <laughs> lemons ASMR. That's a tongue twister. I have to do all these and I'm not gonna make you guys watch me do this. All right, I have zested all of our lemons and don't throw these away because we're gonna use them later for our actual poor choice. Um, I've got all the lemon zest again here on this parchment paper, on this baking sheet. I've got the oven turned on at, to its lowest setting, which is 170 degrees. If your oven can go lower, even better. But these are gonna go in at 170 for about 30 minutes. We're not burning them or cooking them. We're just trying to dry them out so that we can combine them with our other spices and eventually put them in this shaker here. So into the oven, these are going to go and we'll see you back here on the other side. We let our lemon zest uh, do its thing, drying out in the oven. Originally it was spread out, but I put it together just to kind of get an idea of how much I had. And now that I have it, I'm just gonna take it, put it into our bowl because we're gonna mix it up with some other, other seasonings. And I wanna say this is just under a half cup of lemon zest. Now comes the fun part of just putting everything else together. So. With this lemon zest, I have taken some peppercorns. I think if you're gonna make your own lemon pepper seasoning, you gotta have some fresh cracked black pepper. And so what I did was I took some uh, peppercorns, I put them in this mortar and I just, I just grounded them up with this. You can simplify this by having a really good pepper mill or you can use like a, a spice grinder, a coffee grinder even. It's up to you. This is just what I had. So I'm gonna take about two and a half tablespoons of this that I crushed up. Throw that in there because this is lemon pepper after all. To this I'm gonna do two teaspoons of garlic powder and then one tablespoon of onion powder. And then salt kind of just goes upon your own taste. This is just one teaspoon. And the reason why I'm only using one teaspoon right now is because I know I'm gonna put a pesto on this later which has like Parmesan and salt already in it. Um, and I just wanna make sure I'm not getting too crazy with the salt, but you can go up to one tablespoon. It just depends on what you're putting this on. So I'm gonna start with this and see if it needs more. And that's just some kosher salt. Got me a little whisk here, and I'm just going to whisk it up because I'm gonna have to break up that lemon. All right, we have mixed up our lemon pepper seasoning, and that's how it's looking right now. I was gonna put this in a shaker, but because these lemon zest pieces are a little bit bigger, um, then the holes on my shaker, I'm just gonna just sprinkle it with my hands. But if I, if I had like a spice grinder, I would run this through there one more time just to make it a little bit more fine. But this is all good. I, I tend to like more coarse seasonings, but if you wanna make it a little bit more fine, run it through, um, you can put this in a blender or food processor, but I think a spice grinder would really, really get this nice and fined up. So we have got our pork loin here. This is about a three pounder one. Um, typically they come between three and five pounds. To this first side, all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of olive oil. So I've got that olive oil on. I'm just gonna do just a light layer of kosher salt to start with. And again, this is why I kind of backed off the salt that was in my lemon pepper rub. So I think that's good. And I'm just gonna pat that in. Let's not forget the ends. Just going into my lemon pepper seasoning and I'm just gonna hit it. And I'm gonna kinda not necessarily rub it in, I'm gonna spread it and pat it in. And I like how that's looking, so I'm gonna hit these sides and again, 
pat it in. And this meat, this can take a good amount of seasoning, so don't be shy on it. I think that's where a lot of us, when we just first start out cooking, is we don't season enough. And it was like, oh, it was bland, it wasn't great. And then if you were, were to like really look back at like how much you know seasoning did you use, it was like, oh, well, could have used a lot more. So we did that, let's flip it over. We do the exact same thing on the other side. Just a little drizzle of olive oil, and then let's come back with our seasoning. And just, again, patting it in, even though they're called rubs, you don't have to rub. So they lie, John? They lie to you. They should be called pats. Yeah, barbecue pats. But then that sounds like a drug. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our smoker fired up to 250. You can do this on any type of grill. Um, I'm gonna use my Traeger today, but you can use a charcoal grill or whatever you have. Just 250 indirect and keep it steady and consistent. Um, and this will take about two hours or so to cook. I'm gonna give this about a 10 minute chance to just sit here and just rest while these seasonings work into it. And then onto the smoker and we'll move into the next phase. All right, of course the AC always turns on the second we come up here. Um, our grill is up to 250. I'm just gonna go ahead and get our pork loin on here. It has had a chance to sit for about 15 minutes or so. Just going here right on this top rack. And it's as simple as that. Now, probably in about 45 minutes or so, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna check on the color, make sure everything's looking good. I'm gonna spritz it down with a mixture of apple juice and red wine vinegar, like a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and then at that point, I'll feel pretty good about sticking a probe in there and just keeping track of the temperature because we're waiting for this to get to 140 degrees internal and that's when we know it's done. So for right now, we're gonna close this up and we are just gonna patiently wait till we come back up and check on it. All right, it has been about 45 minutes. I just wanna check on it real quick. So we're gonna open this up. So what I've done now is I've just taken a little spray bottle. I've got a half and half mixture of just apple juice uh, and red wine vinegar. I'd say total, this is probably like four ounces or so. And so all I'm gonna do is just take it, and just spray it to keep it from drying out, but also just to kind of add a little bit of flavor. So now that we've got that, one thing I do want to do at this point is stick a meat probe into uh, our pork because I want to make sure that we're, we're taking it off at the right temperature. So cool thing about this grill is it has a built-in feature where it can send to my phone uh, the current temperature of the meat. And you don't have to have a fancy grill like this. You can just buy any type of regular meat thermometer. Thermoworks is a really good company for uh, some of the wireless meat thermometers, but I'm just gonna stick this here right in the center. This is gonna take a while and we will check up on it. Uh, and I say about another um, 45 minutes or so. And we'll spray it again with more of this if we need to but 140 is where we're taking it off at. Hey, we have reached 140 degrees internal temperature. Let me go ahead and take this probe out. Again, it smells, it looks good. And this is the hardest part of this entire process is getting it off and letting it rest. I'm rolling. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Um, while our pork loin is resting, and let me just emphasize, it's so important to let it rest because if you slice right into it, again, all the juices, everything we work for, goes right out on the board and we wanna keep everything in there. So while that rests, let's make our poor choice, which is something as simple as a rum and lemonade. Because we had all those lemons, so we might as well turn them into lemonade and then make a delicious drink. And I didn't wanna bore you guys with the way to make lemonade, but if you must know, uh, I had about a cup and a half worth of lemons after I juiced all those lemons that I had, and that was about eight lemons or so. And then I squeezed that out, got all the pulp and seeds, everything uh, discarded away. Then I took about a cup of water and then just below two cups of sugar, I put it on the stove, turned the heat up to about medium high, got it to a boil and then turned it off and just I just stirred it until it dissolved. Essentially, we were creating a simple syrup. After we made the simple syrup, I just let it cool and then I threw it in the fridge for about an hour and a half or so to let it chill. And then I combined that into the lemon juice and then I added about seven cups of water. Boom, you've got lemonade. Let's go ahead and make this backyard lemonade starting with a shot of Lewis's love affair, which is Sailor Jerry's. What do you call this? The lady in the red dress. The lady in the red dress. <laughs> This is going back to our 20s, and Lewis is like, yo, I will never drink that again. And then guess what he did the next week? He drank it again. 
because he had a love affair with me. We have a love-hate relationship. Yeah, yeah. So I've got about a shot of Sailor Jerry's and then I'm just gonna top this off with just our fresh made lemonade. And you don't have to make fresh made lemonade. You can just buy some Simply Lemonade or whatever you have. And that is our backyard lemonade. Let me give it a try knowing how much I've had to drink so far. You know what, Lewis? That's pretty damn good. I see why you have a problem leaving her alone. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is good to go. And I've got some things that we're gonna use to assemble our sandwiches with. I've got some bacon, I've got some tomato. I've got this garlic butter with Parmesan cheese and basil in it. And then I've got some Italian bread that I actually used to make our pesto. And if you wanna know what my pesto recipe is, it's the one that I used like a few videos ago. I'll put it right here, or maybe right there. I don't know where it's gonna go. Um, but that is this pesto right here, and I can't wait to slather that on. But in the meantime, let's slice these up. We just got our little carving knife here. And I'm gonna try to cut these as thin as possible because we're making these for sandwiches. And the cool thing about pork loin is that you don't have to make these for sandwiches. You can literally just carve it and serve it as is. And you see that, that smoke, that steam still coming from it even though we let it rest for 15, 20 minutes. Let's make our sandwiches. I've got a couple slices of this Italian bread and I've got my oven on 400 degrees because we're just gonna toast this entire thing and kind of bring it together. Hey, you guys remember one video ago when I said, let's make a salad so we can get in shape together and all that stuff like that. And then like 48 hours later, I decided to make um, a pork tenderloin with buttered bread. Remember how fun that was when we were thinking we could do that? And I'm on a butter, both breads, ooh, that's a lot of butter. All right, well, boy, that's whoever eats this slice, just go to the doctor afterwards. Let's go to grab from the middle here. Ooh, these are like perfect slice sizes. Let's double these up. To this, I'm just gonna add one tomato slice, and then on top of that, I'm just going to add some bacon. And I'm just taking one piece of thick cut bacon I was broken in half because it's the perfect size for this. So this is the pesto that I made earlier. And I, again, I, I've made this recipe before. This is with a fusilli pasta. Because I, I, again, I love pesto. If, you, if there's one thing about the channel that you're going to know about me is anything, any opportunity to put pesto on something, I'm absolutely going to do it. And then what I want to do is just take some provolone cheese. I'm going to put this in the oven for about five minutes or so until it's nice and toasted and melted. And then we shall feast. Okay, for those of you who aren't making sandwiches, I just wanna say, if you look here on the cutting board, see all this juice? This is the juice that has escaped from our pork loin. So if you're serving somebody, just simply do this. Take your piece and just run it through there. Get all that flavor back in and then give it to them, which by the way, I'm gonna eat a bite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, one more. Mm-hmm. I'm taking our sandwiches out of the oven. They're in there for like maybe a total of like five minutes or so. Again, it's just to get the cheese melted and the bread toasted. So Oreo, move out the way. That's my dog, she's right here. Get out of the kitchen. Hey, move. You know you're not supposed to be in here. Don't make, look, don't make me look abusive, Oreo. Let's cut it in half, because that's what every video does. It's still hot. And then we're just gonna bring it onto our plate like this. And now the moment of truth, the sandwich itself. It's everything I wanted. But this is it. You can serve it just as slices with something else or you can serve it as a sandwich. It's all on to you. I enjoy the pork on pork experience with the pesto. Uh, I'm very, very happy about that. So I'm gonna continue to kill this and this drink. Oreo, what are you doing? You want a sandwich where well, you can't have one. This has been Pork Choices Kitchen. Let me know your thoughts and your changes and suggestions to it, but have fun with this one. It's really, really good. I promise you that. Enjoy.